Hi, my name is Roger Hostetler. I'm a commercial product and lifestyle photographer here in San Francisco, California. I shoot for some clients like uh, HP, Old Navy, Nike, Adidas. Uh, welcome to my interview with Mark Silver. I hope uh, you guys pick up a few good tips today. Welcome to the Mark Silver Show, Advancing Your Photography, where we bring you tips from remarkable photographers about how to take photographs you love. Hey, Roger, thanks for inviting us to your studio. Hey, thanks for coming. Great to meet you. Tell me about your approach to photography and the type of work you really love to do. Well, I'm a commercial product and lifestyle photographer. I'm really a technical lighter. I love to do a lot of technical lighting. I was kind of, my background is in, in uh, graphic design, art direction, so I'm a very technical person in terms of things very straight, organized, neat, all those kinds of things. Um, that's really the way I look at, at, a, at lighting a project. Um, when I light a, a particular product, kind of what I've done a majority of my work with is, is uh, with product photography. And when I light the product, I kind of look at all the different facets that the product has and what's going to make that thing look and sing and come right off the page. What is going to light it up? And um, I kind of balance it a lot to what I like to say is there's, when I was assistant, a lot of photographers would have a pool table in their studio and I always thought, why in the world would you have a pool table in your studio? And then it kind of made sense to me as I learned lighting from other photographers along the way is that, well, lighting is a lot like playing pool. Mm. That when the light hits the surface, it bounces back off. And if your pocket's here, well, you're going to bounce the ball here to go into your pocket. That makes sense. Yeah. Light works very much the same way is that it's kind of like playing pool that you can look at the angles of the surfaces and see how the light's going to refract off that surface and then you'll understand okay well now if I want to put a highlight here I know where my light needs to be and you know after years and years of doing that I can look at a three-dimensional object and I can work with a three-dimensional object and see how it's going to work in two dimensions because well that's all we have. I notice a lot of still photographers who are moving from natural light to artificial there's like a little little hump you got to get over there. What would you recommend for, for somebody making that, that jump? I think the biggest thing to do is to pay attention to your environment. And, and when you're outside or if you're sitting in your house, and you know, I always have people ask me, family, relatives, whoever, it's like, I have this camera and I'm taking these pictures and I want, you know, I want you to look at it and I want you to tell me, you know, what do you think about it and, and what's good about it and why is it working? And, and I tried it again and it's not working. I said, well, pay attention to where the sun is during that time of day and you know when you're in a room and you're looking at window light what is the nicest place you know nicest time of day for that room and so you can see like the sun comes around your house the angle of lights come through that window and and it kind of shows you okay that time of day this room is going to be great when you start to learn about artificial light you learn that you can put that light in that spot that's a perfect spot for that room for that particular time and moment in time and really see what's going to happen and, and replicate what nature does already. It's already all out there. Right. We're not reinventing anything. There's The sun is the best light that there ever was. You know, a nice slight overcast day, you can't get better light than that. You yeah. can buy all the equipment in the world and it, you can't beat it. So just replicate what nature is actually doing. I right. think so. I mean, a lot of times, and I tell people, you know, you know, they want to buy all these fancy, you know, silver reflectors and gold reflectors and oh, maybe I need a big scrim and it's like, you can do it with a piece of foam core. Right. You know, you can do a lot of the stuff that you want to see with just going to your local art store and buying a simple piece of foam core and you can get that light that you're looking for cool. by using that piece of foam core. A lot of times that's the way, you know, when I uh, work on location quite a bit, I work with natural light and then I supplement it with studio light. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make the natural light fill in a little bit of shadows. Maybe it's not super sunny that day and I want to make it look like the sun's peeking through the window or and I want a warm sunlight coming through. I've learned over the years how to artificially create that kind of a look mm -hmm. without going, well, I need to wait till four o'clock in this room. It's perfect at four o'clock to shoot here, but my client needs six other shots today. So what am I going to do till then? No, I have to do it right now. Okay, looking at magic here for a minute. I love, I love to talk about what gives you the magic in a, in a photograph. 
I think for me, um, when I was a, a graphic designer and a graphic artist, art director, all those positions that I had before, um, a lot of that job was involved was mixing a lot of different size shapes together and getting them to balance out. And really, in all my work that I've done since then, it's still a matter of working with that situation, getting all these unusual sizes, shapes to work together and to steer your viewer's eye through the photograph, to right. lead them in, hold them as long as you can, and steer them out. Roger, any particular lighting tips you'd like to pass along? I think what I really like, I'd say what I see and what I like is I like backlighting. Um, if you let the sun come through and then you supplement your front, you get a really nice highlight across the rim of your subject, and the light on the front of your subject becomes nice and soft. It's great for product, it's great for people, great for everything. Any particular tips in terms of improving composition? Um, the rule of thirds is always a good rule to learn. Most people that have picked up a camera know what the rule of thirds is, and most cameras have the grid lines in the camera for the rule of thirds. And I think once you learn what the rule of thirds are, then you can start breaking the rules. But before, always, what I've always been told, what I always live by, is to learn the rules before you break them, because otherwise you don't even know what they are. Right. <laughs> We're all looking for the mojo, the image that really pops. How do you get one of those? I think you, you find it within. You, you, the more you're behind a camera, the more you take pictures, the more you're gonna learn, the more you're gonna see. And you're gonna find it. You're gonna figure out how to get there in yourself. It's, it's, a, it's a within you. It, the camera's just a tool, just like a hammer's a tool. And really, it's just an extension. It's not going to do something magic for you other than fire when you push the button, which is, you know, a, a very important feature to have in a camera. Some, <laughs> you know, amateur cameras don't fire when you push the button and you've lost your moment. Right. But it's, it's there. It's within you. It's, it's finding it within yourself and, and finding the piece that, you know, you can complete in the puzzle and, and tells the story that you want to tell and the emotion that comes from within. Any final tips for photographers who just want to improve their own photography? Take pictures, take lots and lots of pictures. <laughs> it's really that simple, isn't it? It is that simple. Roger, thanks for joining us. On hey, thank you, great to meet you. Be sure to join our Advancing Your Photography Club to have fun while learning photography. Also check out our guest site for a closer look at their work. Tune in to our next episode of Advancing Your Photography. Until then, this is Mark Silber reminding you to get out and take photographs you love.